Oh, if this mechanic thing doesn't work out, we're gonna have to get the band back together. Uh, you give it a shot, okay? All right. Real fast car. All right, just stop. What? What? You stink. Excuse me? Just give me the guitar. Hey. Go do something else. Well, I'm trying to help you. You're no help. Welcome back to Ugly Truck, and welcome to our 100th video. Woo! Never thought we'd be at 100 videos. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, especially when they're not five minutes long. Ours are 45 minutes to an hour long, so. Yeah, I don't even yeah. want to know how many minutes that is. It adds up. <laughs> so, uh, for our 100th video, we thought we would do something uh, for ourselves on one of our own vehicles. Yeah. So, one morning, Emily, she stumbles uh, across this on uh, Marketplace. Uh, it's a 1985 C10 long bed. It is red. Red? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know what Brian's thinking. Brian's thinking, hey, I'm tired of this power in my six liter. Maybe they'll just trade me this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we could work something out. Yeah. It has that trim piece that he was missing. Oh, that's true. <laughs> okay, so she sees us on Marketplace. Uh, we sent him a message immediately and said, we will buy that. Uh, we'll tell you what we paid for it at some point in this video. <laughs> uh, Brace yourself. So. We sent him that message. The guy responded to us a day later and mm -hmm. he would not give us his phone number. He would only message uh, through Messenger. Yeah. And he said, the stereo works and it has dual exhaust. And I said, consider it sold. <laughs> All right. And mm -hmm. there was only one picture of it. Uh huh. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then he sends another message after I said, consider it sold that said, bring a trailer because it doesn't run very good and the brakes are locked up. <laughs> I said, we'll be there in the morning. <laughs> we'll see you then. Right. Uh, like I said, 85 C10 come from Arkansas. It has rusted out cab corners and that's about it. Yeah. So it's the most rust-free vehicle that we have. Yes. <laughs> and we could not believe how good of a deal we got on it. So let's just show it off a little bit. I'm I'm letting the air out of the tires because we got some work to do to it. In true ugly truck fashion, gotta yep. let the air out. Uh, the interior, not too bad. But I, after I had paid him, he said the windows do roll down, but you got to take the door panel off and uh, touch a couple wires together. Yeah, so but they do work. They do work. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's got All a right. sweet dash pad. Not too bad. I like the I like the choice of orange for the duct tape. It's safety. Uh-huh. Safety. But just look at the rockers on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really really in good shape. So you get to the cab corners. Yeah. So we've never had a truck that we could actually wash and actually wash the rockers without getting tetanus. Uh, tetanus. <laughs> so that'll be nice. And it must have had a it must have had a camper on it at some point because the box has no rust in it. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Come from uh, uh, Searcy, Arkansas. It's got the tow bumper on it. Oh yeah. So it looks like it was towed from here once. <laughs> and it did have something going on with the door, so the doors not quite the same color anymore so yeah you know, but well, whatever extra patina on that side yeah but still a very solid truck and we'll we'll lift it up and we'll show you how solid it is under the truck yes yeah. where it counts right so uh this morning we pulled this thing in here we hadn't done anything at all to it yet except pull it off the trailer the minute we got it here we took and loaded up the dogs and 
wet and uh, power washed it is all. Yep, and, ran through uh, the car wash. So we set it off to the side and then, so now here we are. We're gonna, we're gonna see if we can't get it running and then if it, if it runs okay, then we'll get the brakes working okay, you know, so. Yeah. We'll do that. But it's a, it originally had a 305 in it. When I opened up the hood, when we went to first look at it, I noticed a few things that gave me kind of a clue that uh, it might not be a 305. The main thing that I looked at was the exhaust manifolds. Uh, the exhaust manifolds don't have the uh, air injection tubes on them. So I thought, well, it might be an older motor, okay, without the air injection on it. So whenever that happens, when we buy those, I'm always thinking, well, the 350s were abundant, you know, so, so maybe the 305 went out in it and they somebody stuffed a 350 in it at one point. So that's what we were hoping for. Yeah. So this morning we spent 30 minutes, me trying to stick my head back behind the firewall <laughs> to see what the engine code is, the block casting, okay? Yeah. And it is a, do you want to say it or you want me to say Drum roll. It is a 307. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Two more cubic inches. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have been happier with a 305, honestly. <laughs> I would have been ecstatic with a 350, but uh, the 307, they had, there's, they were only made up until 1973, I think. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but somewhere around there. Just a few years they were made. Some of them were put out with soft camshafts in them. So the cams didn't last very long in them, and uh, they especially didn't last once they got up to where we didn't have any zinc in the oil, mm. or much zinc in the oil. So there's a chance that it may not be that great of a motor. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna try to get this thing running because we hear from people all the time that in the LS swap world that say, we say, hey, what's your pro project? And they come back and they say, I just bought, I just bought this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or I'm I'm in the planning stages or right. I'm saving up, whatever your situation is. Yeah. So we will, we'll put an LS in this someday and we'd actually like to fix all the body work and we'll paint this and make this a nice truck. But just like everybody else, we don't have enough time and we definitely don't have enough money, you know? Yeah. And that's the case with everybody. So this is going to get put away for a year Yeah. until we can put an LS in it or something. But we'd like to drive it in the meantime and have some fun with it. Sure. And, and that's what most of the people are actually doing with their swaps, really. Yeah. They enjoy the truck first and then they want to upgrade. upgrade a little bit and, yep. and have more fun with it. So yeah. you, you kind of you kind of fall in love with driving the truck and then yeah. you're stuck with it the rest of your life. <laughs> and it but. gives you an opportunity to go through like the brakes and the front end parts and know what you're working with when you do get to your swap point so that's right so we try to do things the smart way around here the smart way being the cheap way we, we don't want to spend a bunch of money on uh, this motor if it does not function correctly yeah you know or if it's got a flat cam in it or anything that's going to make that motor not run good so yeah we're going to do a compression check on it to begin with uh if it passes a compression check then I'm good with, we'll change the oil in it and uh, we'll work on getting it running okay. Sweet. Okay, all right, so let's do it. All right, so not everybody's been doing this forever, okay? And uh, we get a lot of questions about these engines of, of how you go about getting something like this going if you have it and you're, you're just wanting to make this thing run good or run better and what you absolutely have to have what needs to be there uh so we'll, we'll go through that it, it doesn't matter if you're not if you're doing an ls swap or whatever you can you can still take what you learn from doing something like this and apply it to later on down the road when you're doing something like that so sure no matter what, I guarantee you, we'll learn something today, okay? Yes. First thing on this truck, it's got the world's smallest air filter on it for some reason. Uh -huh. So I don't know what that came off of, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't off of this truck because I can't remember any of the 305s having this small air filter on it. Uh, we've got some bigger ones around here. Yeah. Oh, oh. 
What's that? Uh, I see that somebody else has already been in here doing something. Huh. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. Yeah. Can't say I disagree with them. Right. Absolutely. Make sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely make your truck run better. If that had gotten sucked down into the carburetor, it could have been big trouble. You realize that? I know. That's why I said don't start it. Oh, I, I just thought it had a fuel leak. Oh, no. It's worse. Right. <laughs> all right. So, years ago, I used to do this stuff all the time, and people would bring you, you know, V8 Chevy pickup, whatever, V8 Ford, Dodge, and they wanted to make it run good, okay? So, you can't, I couldn't just go ahead and throw spark plugs and wires on it and a distributor and, and a carburetor and that, and then give them a bill for, you know, fifty dollars and then say <laughs> oh by the way number two cylinder is dead so it'll never run right yeah so they would get a little upset with you if you did that so the best way to do it is to start from scratch under understand what you have for a motor because your engine is just a, a big air pump and you're just feeding 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel hopefully you know is kind of what you're trying to do with them. But without a good air pump, you'll never get it to run right. So there's no sense in us going ahead and putting a bunch of parts in it if it's not a good air pump. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we're gonna pull the spark plugs out of it. We're gonna disconnect the HEI distributor, okay? By unplugging that one. Okay. All right, so it's unplugged so it won't create spark, okay? Okay. And then, we're gonna do a compression check on it. Okay. Do we need to do anything with the fuel? Nope. It's not fuel injected, so as long as we're not sitting there quarting it with the accelerator pump from the carburetor, then we'll open it up one time to do the compression check. Mm -hmm. We'll prop it open, but that's it. Okay, so you don't really have to worry about that. Sweet. The oil that's in it smells like fuel really bad. Yeah. And it would be nice to go ahead and change the oil in it and run it a little bit and then do a compression check. Mm -hmm. But if it does have a bad cylinder or something, or if the cam's flat in it, I'm not even gonna spend the $30 on oil for it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We would just make it run good and then run as good as it could and then just add oil to it as we need it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So let's get the spark plugs out. The first thing I'm going to do, you never know where somebody dropped a distributor in on the pe on the driver's side on a small block Chevy on the one closest forward. That's number one. Okay. All right. I'm going to follow it up and I'm going to see where somebody put uh, number one on the distributor. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's that one. That's what most people would do. Yeah. They would point it to the that cylinder. So if you took one of these trucks out of the dealership, brand new, it was that one that was number one. And the distributor was turned a little bit more straight. So to, to see that one be number one is not all that crazy because that's the, how they originally did them hmm. on most of them. That's interesting. Yep. So we know with this, we know that's number one. So we're going to redo the firing order then. So one. Eight four three six five seven two on the small block Chevy. Oh, it's even got that dipstick too. That's an older, the older dipstick. Same as like what we have on the seventy four. Yeah. I didn't notice it when we bought it, but that would have been an indication that it's not a nineteen eighty uh, five motor. Yeah. If you were doing this on a motor that didn't have an HEI in it, you would just uh, disconnect the uh, positive side of the ignition coil, okay? Okay. Uh, either one of them, the positive or the negative, but if you did the positive, that'd probably be the best thing to do, okay? Because you are going to have to have the battery plugged in to do it. Yes. And you're going to be cranking it over. They're wet. Wet. Right? Not a 
as quite as wet as the other one. Not so. Yeah. Okay. Well, so none of them are just caked with oil, which is great. They don't look that old, so they were probably put in there 15 minutes before we showed up. <laughs> the guy was wiping his hands when we pulled in. Oh. That one, right? All right, so we got all the spark plugs out. I'm gonna take and open up the throttle. Okay. Just to let it get all the air it possibly can. All right, so it's wide open. I have to prop the choke open for something. Use the spark plug wire. Oh yeah, nice job. Like that? Good thinking. So, like I said, we don't have spark because we got that uh, undone. Uh, throttle's open. We're going to be cranking on this thing a bunch, okay? Mm. So, we're going to be using our Top Don. Yes, Top Don sent us uh, a jump pack a while back, and we have used that thing a million times. And then they just sent us a charger tester. So, we're going to put that to the test today. Yep, we've been using it a little bit. The thing's awesome so far. It uh, is uh, what Bluetooth, mm -hmm. so I can look on my phone and w run it off my phone, which is crazy. But uh, we've just been using it for a couple days, and so far it's working great. Yep, I'll yeah. put a link in the description if anybody is looking for a battery charger and tester. It's, and tester, yes. It's a tester also, and it uh, charges just about any kind of battery you can think of. Yeah. Okay. Plutonium batteries? <laughs> no. Is it plutonium that your parent spaceship runs off of? Uh, uranium. Uranium? Yeah. Yeah, oh. that's why there's a lot of paperwork involved for them to like actually drive here. So they usually uh, rent something, you know. Huh. If that's the case, why does it seem like they're here every weekend? Well, it's very expensive to go home. When we got together, you said that they were from a far, far away planet. And yeah, but I mean, you know, far away these days. It's a 45 minute drive. That's true. So, you want to wash the gauge? Okay. Want to crank it over? We're going to crank it over, and when it kind of stops rising, you know, then we'll end it there. Oh, we're going to have to probably put the top down. Uh, oh, we'll put the jump thing, thing on it. Yeah. All right, so I got this battery should be fully charged. But we just put the top down on it just to give us a good jump each time. It's a very high quality battery, by the way. It's brand new. It was brand new when we bought the truck, so I figured that was worth a hundred bucks, you know? Yeah. So. Ready? Ready. Okay. 45, so like 145. Huh. It actually hit 145? Yeah. That's pretty good. Sweet. Ready? Ready. Okay. That one hit 145 again. Oh. 145? Yeah, I don't know if it completely evened out. Okay. Okay. Number five. Okay, that one broke 150. Sweet. Okay, number seven. Right. Yep. Okay, it's like 145 again. Wow. Right. Yep. Okay, 150 again. Every time I turn the key on, there's sparks in the door. In the door? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? those are the wires he was talking about for the window. Yeah. All right, go for it. Mm. I 
think that one was almost 150. Okay. Ready. I'm gonna call that one like 142. Okay. Oh, that one was like 130-ish. Do you wanna try it with some more juice? No because it's cranking over so slow. So that's good. If it was cranking good, it would have yeah. been fine. Okay. Right. So. Thank so, you, Topped On. Yep, for cranking it over that much and it still has 75% battery power in it. Yep. That's pretty good. Yes. You know? We have used that thing so many times. Yep, I'm gonna charge it up and we'll use it when we start. Sweet. Okay, worried that you weren't going to see the whiteboard today, huh? Right? Oh, I know. Okay. Uh, I was amazingly surprised. I did not expect to see these numbers. Yeah. Uh, when we got down to the last one cranking on it, the starter was getting pretty warm and the battery was down to about 75%. So, so that's okay. I think if the battery was charged up good, I think it'd all be in the 150 range, you know? Yeah. One, 145 to 150. Uh, when we first started, if it had hit 125, I would have been thrilled, <laughs> honestly. Sweet. So, as long as they were all even, but to see them hitting 140 to 150 pounds is great. So, we have a great engine to work with. Yay. This is not an engine from just from 19, early 1970s. It's had to have like something done to it in order to be that good still so yeah hopefully yeah. it's had a cam put in it uh maybe some different heads uh because they did not have uh, hardened valve seats back then so mm -hmm. you'd have to add a uh, lead yeah if you didn't want the valve seats to get uh destroyed in this thing so so maybe it's got different heads on it maybe a cam i did rock the engine back and forth and it doesn't have much uh play for the uh, timing chain oh sweet. so so i think it's been worked on yeah somebody freshened it up a little bit yeah but it's a good one so we can throw the spark plugs back in it and uh we'll raise it up and change the oil in it now okay sweet. so it's we're at the go-ahead point to spend money yay <laughs> Tires have flat spots from sitting. Oh, yeah. Get your ball. Good job. Get some fresh oil in this baby. Yeah. Them that doesn't stink like gas. Get rid of this Fram oil filter where somebody yells at us. I only run Baldwin filters. Ah. Oh. Oh boy. Yeah, that's very gassy. What's up? That'll run nice through the waste oil burner. <laughs> Get nice and warm. A lot of gasoline in that. Oh, oh, oh. I put the oil filter on with an impact wrench. They were worried it was going to fall off. All right, you want to show them the rest of it while it drains a little bit? Yes. Okay. So, as you can see, it <laughs> did have, or does have dual exhaust. So the guy was not yeah. uh, misinforming us. 
Yeah. Uh, so what you do is, hmm? sorry, there's a piece of something in there. Oh. Huh. Not sure how we'll get that out, but we will. Okay. <laughs> it's hung by some wire back there on that side. Yeah. But, uh, it's got coil over shocks for uh, carrying heavy loads. All right, so off to fix that. Left side seems pretty good. Uh, notice no rust yeah. under this cab. Yeah, look at the bed floor, look at the rockers. Yeah, so that's amazing. Yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, the transmission's leaking out the uh, speedometer cable, which is fairly normal. There's a couple O-rings to replace them there. We'll do that. Okay. It's got a Turbo 350 transmission in it. Sweet. And that's been changed too, because I'm pretty sure in 85, this would have had a lockup torque converter, and it's not there oh. anymore. So this transmission's not the original one either. And the engine, it's definitely at least been painted, you know, it's yeah. nice and clean. I did look on the markings on the front of the block. It, it's not been marked up like it's been uh, done at a machine shop, like it's been rebuilt or anything. Yeah. So. All right. And, uh, we're using an O'Reilly's MicroGuard filter. Filter. It'll work just fine. I could have went with nothing on this thing as bad as the oil was. <laughs> I don't think anything was an improvement over what it had. Yeah. All right. All right. So needs a idler arm for sure. It also has a worn Pittman arm. You can see it move. Oh yeah. That's it. Really see that one. Ah, so it, it at least needs an idle arm, a pitman arm. Uh, I think we'll probably end up replacing all of them though. Tie rods and yeah. ball joints and everything, you know. Start fresh. Yeah. Make a left hand. Chargers already got this battery up to 90%. Jeez, they're cranking on it that much. Let's put oil on it before we forget. Oh, yeah. Ooh, speaking of before we forget, should we cut those zip ties that are holding the wide open? That's a good idea. That would be bad. I run Rotillo and uh, one of these summertime 1540. Rotella T4, everybody's favorite. Does have some zinc in it, but we're gonna add some boogers. My favorite STP oil treatment. Should've warmed it up a little bit. I usually keep it in my pocket. Ooh, you never know when you'll need it. Okay, okay, so the spark plugs that we took out of it, they all, they look pretty decent, okay? So I'm gonna reuse them. They're the same part number that I bought. Uh, they're R45 TESs. Their gap was down below 30 thousandths on a couple of them. So I've got the gap at around 40, 42 to 45 thousandths on them. Got a high energy ignition in it. So that's what their uh, gap would have been. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll, We'll try to run these plugs and see see what happens with it, because we we are uh, uh, cheap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We said we we're gonna try to do it under a hundred bucks for a hundredth video. Yeah. So we're up to thirty now for oil and a filter. Yeah. 
You never know. So the spark plugs, new spark plugs were 60 bucks. But these are, these are gonna work fine. Sweet. Okay. So let's put the plugs back in. Two, three, four. All right. All right, so like, don't use a, a air impact wrench or anything to put a plug in. Always do them by hand. How many, uh, what's the torque spec? Is there, how many corns or <laughs> spark plugs on a small block Chevy? <clears throat> well, this is a cast iron cylinder head, okay? So I'm going to go with probably about uh, uh, 18 foot pounds, but that equals uh, 37.49 corns. Okay, 37.49. Yeah, and remember that that accounts for today's temperature too. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're in Missouri. It's about uh, 60 degrees today. Uh, probably 35 percent rel relative humidity. A lot of our new people, they may not know about corns, but it's a torque method that is is a sweeping the nation, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Um, Comes from. Uh, oh, did it did it originate in Nebraska, or it was just popular there because of the corn? No, it it, orig it originated in my hometown in Nebraska. Oh. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. There, there's some things I just can't talk about, but when you deal with the corn community, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of FFA. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that stands for? Uh, Future Farmers of America. Well, that's what that's what people have been led to believe, but hmm. not really. Oh, what does it stand for? Then? That's part of what I can't tell you. Oh, is it because it's a family-friendly show? No. Oh. No, no, no. No, it's just the code of the code of farmers. Oh, I see. Farm code. Yeah. Corn code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty rough. I remember oh, yeah. one year, one of them decided that he was going to grow nothing but beans that year oh yep. never saw him again hmm. let's just say that okay i mean nothing happened to the guy he was still around you just didn't see him in the coffee shop anymore oh, oh he just wasn't in the corn club anymore no no they're brutal oh yeah That might have been too many corns. If these were aluminum heads also, I'd absolutely use my Vanpo, right? Uh-huh. Uh, torque wrenches. Yeah. yeah. Another awesome tool somebody sent us. Set of torque wrenches. All right, so all the boogers are drained in. Let's get rid of that. Mm -hmm. I don't like this wire here for the choke. And it felt, it came apart, but that was connected. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that and uh, because it's warming up around here I'll just open this choke up deal with not having that for a little while yeah so instead of having a exposed wire around here we'll do that okay yeah. it's a little safer uh, cover that up all right, so I'm going to try to do it with these wires, you know. They, they look a little rough, but if there's a problem with them, we'll figure it out here in just a second, okay? Okay. So, number one. One. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to assume that they got the firing order right, okay? Okay. Uh, so, one, eight, four, three, which is this one. So, that's right. Okay. Six, five, five and seven. I always get mixed around for some reason. Seven, seven, seven. Okay. So that was right. Sweet. Okay. Number eight. The very next one. So eight. 
four. Five, seven, two. Uh, eight, one eight four three six five seven two. Front one out here. Get that off the magnifier somehow. And then we only got one left, so six. Sweet. All right. So at this point, we're back at the the spot basically that we started at. We know it's got great compression. We gapped the spark plugs, the original plugs that are in it. So, and then we've got a uh, new oil and filter in it, okay? Yeah. So, I'm going to start it up, and the first thing I'm going to look at when I start it up is going to be a uh, vacuum. Okay. Okay, because I, I, I would pretty much tune the whole motor just using a vacuum gauge, not like putting a timing on, light on it or whatever, because we're dealing with its own monster, you know, we don't have any specs for what this thing is but yeah. we're not going to time it to, for 307 specs and that so we'll just we'll put a vacuum gauge on it and i can see how uh, good or bad it's running once we fire it up and uh, we'll we'll go from there okay okay so let's do that i'm going to go ahead and just uh prop the uh, choke open okay because uh, i know it was already <clears throat> way too rich uh, and the, we've got the wire going to it gone, so it's never going to come open on its own. So we'll prop it open. Okay. Or it could just, I'll just loosen up the screws actually and open it up, okay? Okay. Yeah. Man. See, that's from using the wrong torque specs. Too many corns? Yeah. Same guy that installed the oil filter. Yeah, yeah I guess. It's so, uh, hopefully this thing will turn. Some of them had a notch in them and they weren't adjustable. If that's the case, I could just take it off. Yeah. Okay. So, ah. Okay. So we'll just leave it like that. It might just need adjusted too. It might the electric choke on it might work. We'll see. But we'll leave it like that to begin with. No choke, basically. No choke. No choke. You get no coke. He's like you don't get no choke. Okay. So we're gonna have to do it when the doors open. Oh, probably. Choke out the dogs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a vacuum gauge on it right now. Okay. Port at the back of the manifold is a great one. So I'll start it up and see how it's running the way it was, okay? Okay. Because we haven't really fixed anything on it other than spark plug gap. Yep. Ready? Sure. Brace yourself for that dual exhaust. your finger on it for me? Not really. Huh? Sure. Just hold your finger right like that. Okay. And once I get it running, go ahead and take your finger off of it. Okay. 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 I guess it doesn't like its spark plugs gapped. Yeah, I don't know. Or it doesn't like oil. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, top down to the rescue again. Do you want me to hold it again then? Alright, 
So the only thing that we changed was the spark plug gap. So uh, I don't think these spark plugs are very happy that are in it. So we're just going to go ahead and put the brand new ones in it. Okay. They're filed. We knew they were filed, but I hope I was yeah. hoping it would fire up on it and clean itself out. But ain't going to happen. So we're going to put uh, new plugs in it, and then there's no reason why it shouldn't start since we drove it in here. Okay. Yeah. That's the downfall of trying to save some money. Yeah. So <laughs> no problem. At least it's easy to put plugs in. Yeah, we know how to do it now. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Okay. New spark plugs are in. We spared you having to watch that again. Now we'll see if it'll start. Yes. Okay. Do over. You ready? Sure. Okay. Sparks going on in here. Yeah. Every time I touched it with my knee, it was sparking. Okay. So. So now. Still smells like it's running rich. Yeah, it's running super rich. So we're gonna work on adjusting everything. In order to adjust everything, I'm gonna get rid of all the vacuum lines, okay? Okay. That one there is going to, that's full vacuum right there and going to the distributor, so we don't want that. Um, this vacuum line, I think this is the timed vacuum. Okay. If I remember right. But we're going to take and put a vacuum cap on all these lines, okay? Because in that way you can tell just exactly what the carb's doing. Yeah, so I'm not, if I'm looking at vacuum, I, I want to know for certain that I'm not dealing with a vacuum leak anywhere. So if we plug all these off, we know that it's not, okay? Doesn't mean the intake can't be leaking, but um, it's it's not. It's probably not. At least narrows it down a little bit. Yeah. That one. That one. That one's PCV. We'll even cap that one off. Cut. Cap that one. Is that all of them? Except for the back one? The other one there, that went down to the transmission. Okay. Oh, okay. The solenoid. This guy on the front. Oh, right yeah, that one. Yeah, it's the choke pull-off one. All right, so that one's capped off. I got my vacuum gauge hooked up. Uh, all my vacuum lines plugged. My distributor's loose a little bit so I can turn it. We're going to start it and let it run a little bit, and while it's running. I'm gonna start turning the idle down. And this, while it's running, I'll hook the timing light up to it too, so I can use the tachometer off the time, <coughs> timing light. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna fire it up again.
was I just did a steady idle. Things are going exactly as we did not plan, all right? Yes. Uh, we got into trying to tune this carburetor, and uh, we what I did with this on the truck was the idle mixture screws. I screwed both of them all the way in, bottomed them out, uh, and the truck still ran, and it still ran very, very rich. Yes. Okay? Uh, a couple other things that I did just to check out what was going on. Uh, you can do a little straw test through the top of a, a quadrajet 
uh, you can you can feel the uh, primary metering rods in there and when you start one of these up the vacuum that's uh, applied to that is going to make that primary metering jet drop down into the jets okay okay so and it did that so i know that that was working okay and the other thing would be the float level and the float level would have to be quite a ways off to make it run the way it was so yeah uh, so we got to uh, looking around on this carburetor and emily found out that it's a 800 <laughs> cfm uh, quadrajet it's a big one yeah <laughs> so they you can make a, a 305 run off of, of a, a 800 cfm quarter jet yeah okay but i don't think that this was probably the original carburetor for the 1985 c10 pickup okay yeah this carburetor came from somewhere but i don't have the time or the patience today <laughs> to try and tune that carburetor even though it is possible uh i just can't do it ever since we did the opening of the video emily and me we've been fighting non-stop we don't have that much time because she's got to get to guitar lessons <laughs> oh come on if your guitar playing was a little bit better it might make my my vocal skills shine a little bit more than what they already do oh you think so okay so here we go all right we're gonna abandon that idea uh -huh. for another day uh, we're gonna put on a Edelbrock uh, was it a 1406 yep. so right uh, so it's a 600 CFM I think so right 600 I think so six or 650 yeah six or 650 whatever but whatever. this came off of a 350 small block Chevy it was yellow a bonanza uh -huh. you might remember you might remember it so <laughs> It, this is what was running that truck uh, the very first time we work, worked on it. We put it on and we tuned it and everything, and it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to throw this on our 307. And it may even run a little rich, but it'll run a lot better than that one. I know that for certain. Yeah. What else did we find out? We also found out that this engine is like a hodgepodge of different stuff. Emily looked up the cylinder head casting numbers on it, and it has cylinder heads off of a 1972 uh, 350 cubic inch motor. Yes. Okay. So. And they're pretty good heads, which is nice. So hopefully, since it's got different heads on a 307 engine block, maybe those heads have been updated a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because so. I think they did not originally come with hardened valve seats. So. That's right. Yep. So we're going to get to putting this Edelbrock on it. They're not a sponsor, by the way. No. <laughs> uh, but we love Edelbrock. I wish they would sponsor us. Edelbrock, call me. I wish somebody would sponsor us. Anybody, please. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in order to do it, because the Quadrajet is a spread bore carburetor and uh, this is a square bore, we are going to have to put on an adapter. Okay. Ooh. So we'll, we'll throw an adapter on the intake, get that on it, and finally get this thing running the way it should. Oh, finally. Okay? Maybe our so, eyes won't be burning anymore. I hope not. <laughs> so this is a new day. We gave up yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, and then I, I came in here this morning and uh, some elves had uh, gotten rid of there was a there was a device sitting right here and uh that had gotten been gotten rid of oh. which is awesome because it, it uh, the edelbrock carburetor does not fit there with that device that sat right there that's definitely not illegal to remove yes yes so thank you elves or aliens or whoever it was that did that we appreciate it uh -huh. okay yes so I got myself a new gasket here. We're gonna uh, go ahead and bolt the adapter down. And I had to go get new bolts for this thing because I lost my original ones. These are chrome. All right. Okay, so gives us an opportunity to use our Vanpo 
torque wrenches. Mm -hmm. Again, they don't uh, have a direct setting for corn, so you do have to. Uh, I'm doing this one in uh, inch pounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll have to convert it if you're using corns. But. Yeah. Okay, so 96 okay. inch pounds. Um, so I'm tightening the. I'm tightening it down to uh, eight foot pounds, basically. Is that good? Thanks again to Vanpo. Next live show we do, we're going to uh, possibly give away a set of Vanpo torque wrenches. Yeah, it's super, super handy to have around. This set has a quarter inch, three eighths, and a half inch, so we've been using them. All right, so that's torqued down. Like I said, eight foot pounds. And I don't know where I came up with that number. This is the other thing I like about the torque wrench. Ooh. It holds that. Oh, so yeah. I can pull them apart. But then, you know. Yeah, they have a locking. Yeah, so I don't have to fight with that. Because yeah. on my other torque wrench, I do have to fight with that. Yeah, you got to get the pliers. Yep. Rando O'Reilly's this morning. Grabbed a stud kit for this. I also picked up a couple carburetor kits. Mm -hmm. which I don't need. Okay, we took that carburetor off. It was perfectly tuned, okay, for a 350. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we bolt it on and it's just about right. It'll definitely be better than the other one. 600 is better than 800. Okay, I always use a washer. So that's the original bracket for that, for the cable. Okay. I just cut it off because it didn't reach on the other side over there and I'm going to have to fix it later, but that'll be fine for what we're doing right now. Are you mad about your guitar lesson? Mm Same torque on this one. I'm not putting the corns to it. Just do it evenly. Yep. So I'll have to do some fixing on that. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So the carburetor's torqued on. This thing, like the the quadrajet, had a fuel filter on the inlet. Mm -hmm. and, and these do not, you know, so I added that one. We're just going to use a ton of hose for now. Okay, we did the math on the engine and we did the math on the cylinder heads. And if everything that we added together comes out all right, this thing could put out 170 horsepower. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty good. Yeah. It's nothing to knees at. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's a 307. So that's one thing that's cool about these carburetors is the the idle mixture screws. You can easily get to them. You can do them by hand, but I bottom them out down to the bottom. Whatever you do, don't put them too tight or anything, but I'll put a mark on them oh, yeah. when they're bottomed out. Mm -hmm. So I know I can count my turns and everything and see where they're at, make sure both of them are the same, kind of. Because on um, other carburetors, like that Quadrajet, you can't see that. Yeah. You can't see the um, mixture screws down there, the idle screws. So. But these you can. Everybody knows these are great carburetors. You see them everywhere. Yeah. And they're really easy to put different metering rods. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. What have we got? We got. Fuel. We got fuel, carburetors torqued down, all of our vacuum lines are capped off. Uh, we got our vacuum pump hooked up, yeah, vacuum gauge hooked up, and we should be good to start this thing. We'll hook the timing light up in advance. All right, so let's cheers. Here we go. It doesn't have any fuel in it, so. You're gonna have to crank it for a little bit or I need to bottle feed it. 
try it, see, see what happens. Yeah.
so uh, we got it. We got the carburetor set pretty good. I'm gonna hook the power brake booster back up to it. I'm gonna plug the uh, PCV valve into this port. Okay. Okay. Uh, I ran a vacuum line to the vacuum advance on the distributor. Okay. Okay. That one there on the Edelbrock carburetor is a, the timed vacuum, ported vacuum. Mm. That one's full vacuum all the time. So is that one, of course. Oh, I need to get some new grommets. We'll just set it in there for now. It'll, yeah. do, the, it'll do the same thing. Yeah. So let's start it up. Hopefully our RPMs will be sitting at the same, right around 700, with, it, with all the vacuum sources plugged into it. We'll put some air in the tires and take it for a drive. Sweet. Try starting it one more time. Okay, so not, not so bad, but uh, the timing is all over the place. I would set the timing on it, looking at it with a, the timing light, mm -hmm. okay? And I'd rev it up a couple times, just change the RPMs a little bit, yeah. look at it again, different timing, mm -hmm. okay? So the mechanical advance, uh, something's going on with that. Uh, the vacuum advance absolutely does not work. I was plugging it into full vacuum and it had no advance. So we're gonna end up putting a, a distributor in it with no vacuum advance. Every time you go back to that RPM, that timing should be on the exact same spot. Uh, and then I noticed too, sometimes we go to start it Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it cranks weird. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll go and start it again, and then it cranks over just fine. So that's a, a indication that something's going on with the timing. So it's going to probably get a new distributor. Okay. Okay. And there can't be anything else wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one, I mean, it's definitely a basket case. You know, yeah. I don't think there's a better way to put it. Right. Whoever thought they were gonna make that carburetor work with but we'll make it the nicest 307 running yeah by the time we're done oh yeah yeah now I'm like I'm all in on the 307 that's right <laughs>
But other than that, everything sounds great on it. So pretty happy. Yes. Okay. Big improvement for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so no Will It Run is complete without a sketchy test drive. And at Ugly Truck, it is actually illegal to go for a ride and not take the dogs with us. So, you guys wanna go for a ride? Come on, let's go. Where's Ripley? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's pretty quiet in here. I'm gonna open up this one so we got some air. Ooh. Ooh, it's a it's a wide one. Yeah. You guys ready? Juicy ready. It's a great truck. Yeah. Successful test drive. All right, so it looks like we've got ourselves a pretty good 307 and a pretty solid truck. And that's a great start to any project. Uh, we told you earlier, we were gonna say how much we paid for this. Brace yourselves. We paid $1,600 for this truck. So even if you went and bought that Eagle Brock carburetor brand new, we're still into this thing a couple grand, you know, fit, you know, 21, 2200 bucks, which is, you know. Cheap fun. Yeah, yeah. So definitely something that you could have a ton of fun with and something that you can upgrade as you go. Uh, on this thing, we do need to address some things with the brakes and the front end and the whole distributor thing, but that's all fixable. So we're super excited about this project and where this is headed. And we're super excited about 100 videos. Yep, 100 videos. Yep. Uh, am I gonna be singing in this outro? I, I don't think so, not this time. We'll see later on. All right, so. well, uh, that being said, please hit that subscribe button. I can't tell you how much we would appreciate that. Yes. It would help us out tremendously. Yep. And we will bring you another 100 videos, okay? Yep. Thanks a lot. Thank